Right guys, we have benchmarks for the M2 Max that of course we should see in upcoming MacBooks and Mac Mini refreshes and it's kind of disappointing so let's delve into it. So in case you forgot, we were expecting new Macs in November but of course Apple themselves said they're pretty much done for the year in terms of releases. German later confirmed this and so many were gutted there would be no new Macs but there was an upside because the delay of these Macs could of course result in the M2 and the M2 Max being based on the superior 3 nanometer process resulting in much better performance. However, we now have leaked benchmarks of the M2 Max via Geekbench and the results actually are not as impressive as we thought and it seems that yes, these chips are going to be based on the same 5 nanometer process. So for those curious, the single core score is 1853 and the multi core score is 13855. Now for comparison, the regular M2 chip basically has similar single core performance and of course weaker multi core performance as expected. However, the fact the single core performance is very similar to the base M2 chip does basically confirm that yes, we should see the same 5 nanometer process. Since if we did see 3 nanometers, there would be improvements with both the single core and the multi core performance. Now, for those wondering how this compares to the M1 Max, well, much like the jump from the M1 to the M2, the jump here is not that massive. It's really minor changes. Now, yes, I know these Macs are probably running on beta software and, of course, are not completely ready yet. And so maybe the score does improve as the product gets closer to launch. However, the fact is, if there was a 3 nanometer chip, we would see a much bigger jump even during early development. Now, thankfully, not everything is bad news because, like German told us, we do have a 12 core CPU with the M2 Max. However, I doubt they're going to be additional performance cores. Instead, expect more efficiency cores with the M2 Max. Now, this might seem like bad news, but to be honest, the current 14 inch MacBook Pro does lag behind the M2 Max when it comes to battery life. And so we should now hopefully see better battery life with the M2 Max with this increase in efficiency cores. Also, we see a whopping 96 gigs of RAM in this. That's crazy for a MacBook. But again, for those who need the absolute best performance and the best specs, Apple's delivering on that. So yeah, those parts of this leak are great news, but the lack of a three nanometer chip is kind of a bummer to be honest. And for those wondering that, hey, could we see these MacBooks a little earlier than we thought? I personally don't think so because yes, Apple could theoretically give us a press release for the Mac Mini and MacBooks because they're not major refreshes. However, Apple made it pretty clear they're done for the year CS. So yes, I don't think M2 Pro and M2 Max being based on a 5 nanometer process is going to result in an earlier release. And yeah, ultimately guys, based on these benchmarks, it might not be worth waiting for the new MacBooks because while I could see someone get the M2 Pro Mac Mini because there was no M1 Pro variant, that was not the case for the MacBooks. The M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBooks are fantastic. And if you live in countries like the US, there's incredible deals on those MacBooks. And so yeah, without major performance upgrades, maybe these M2 models aren't worth getting. However, I'm hoping that Apple can surprise us in some way with these MacBooks, maybe with the battery life improvements, if it is a substantial increase, then I could see some people getting it for that. Maybe we could see new colors, HDMI 2.1 maybe, but yeah, we'll see what Apple does with these new MacBooks. I do want to mention, by the way, there was another benchmark found for the M2 Max. This was slightly better than the first one, but of course, it still does not present a major 3 nanometer upgrade. But I guess this does show the chip should be better once, of course, we see the final version of the product. Since, as some of you guys might point out, this is running beta firmware to macOS 13.2, so of course, that could have an effect on the performance. Anyways, let's delve into your comments. So Coca Fanta says, Time to buy M1 Pro slash Max MacBook. Can't wait anymore till next year. It won't be a huge upgrade anyways till we get M3 and M4 chipsets in our hands. And yeah, based on these new benchmarks, I would agree with that. It seems these M2 chips are going to be very minor upgrades and we're going to see 3 nanometers with the M3 series instead. And I guess that does make sense because Apple usually has a TikTok cycle with most upgrades and so the M1 being a revolutionary upgrade, it kind of makes sense that the M2 is really not a major refresh, but we should see M3 give us big upgrades. And regarding the current MacBook Pros, I do agree those are great buys right now because you can now find them with major discounts 
And if that's not available, Apple does sell it refurbished and their refurbished products are basically brand new. So yes, if you want a laptop right now, I would recommend getting the M1 models because the M2 won't be a massive refresh. So at Goob Film Cast 4239 says, I think Apple is actually beating their Mac sale projections and also anticipates even better sales numbers when compared with Windows PCs. Windows machines will, of course, outsell Macs in overall units, but Apple has been gaining market share against their Windows competition each year since 2020, while Apple dominates phones, tablets, wearables. There is still plenty of room left for macOS to snatch tons of market share from x86 slash Windows. Now, yes, I completely agree with this. Apple has been on a winning streak with the Apple Silicon Macs, and it's definitely gonna continue being the case. However, the best way Apple can capture most of the market, in my opinion, is of course, to launch cheaper Macs. Specifically, a sub $1,000 MacBook. Now, of course, I know that Apple sells a $1,000 MacBook Air, but what I'm imagining is a $700 or $800 MacBook that, yes, has some compromises, but ultimately gives you that performance of the M1 chip at a much lower price. And there has been rumors regarding a 12 inch MacBook revival, so maybe that is gonna be that affordable MacBook. And I think many students and light users are gonna appreciate that. Now in terms of the compromises Apple should make, obviously the size is gonna be a compromise. It's gonna be 12 inches. That's not going to appeal to everyone. And also I can see Apple removing Touch ID on this. Maybe some display downgrades. And yes, that would suck, but this should have the bare bones experience. And ultimately, consumers are going to pay for the chip in this since it's going to be much better than the competition when it comes to performance and battery life. So Ihan Ali 7231 says, Switching to Apple Silicon was the perfect time to bring back the Macworld conference. Now, personally, I couldn't care less about Macworld because fundamentally, these are the same events Apple holds on a regular basis with a fancy name. So I don't think we need a Mac World Conference in future years because we do have Mac focused events like the 2021 October event and the 2020 November event before it. Also the Mac World Conferences were organized by Mac World the magazine. So I'm sure that Apple would rather have events they organize with full control on what they do. Anyways, that's about it. But tell me your thoughts regarding this in the comments. Anyways, thank you for watching guys. Make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. Check out the video in the link above on details regarding new home pods. And on that note, see ya peeps.